Welcome back to the brand new episode of the Skybox series. In this video, we will look at how to create simple cloudy skybox like this one. And the approach will work just fine for most of the games, unless your game allows the player to fly through the clouds. If that's the case, then you will probably need volumetric clouds, which I will cover in the future at some point. But for now, I'm using Unity 6 and my project is set up in URP. And now with all of that out of the way, let's get started. All right, I have this scene. And the most notable thing is this global post-processing volume, which has the module tone mapping with the mode ACES. All right, now let's create a shader graph. Make sure to select unlit shader graph. Then I'm going to call it cloudy and make sure to include skybox in your name. Then based on the shader, let's create a material. Again, I'm going to call it cloudy skybox. Then go to the sliding window and in the environment tab, in the skybox material, let's assign our cloudy skybox. Then in the shader graph, open up the graph inspector. And in the graph setting, make sure to uncheck cast shadows. And before we start creating clouds, Let's set some default skybox colors because currently it feels a bit disorienting. Now I've already covered how to create simple skyboxes unity, so you should definitely check it out. But here I'm going to use quick and dirty approach using gradient node. Let me apply some nice gradient. Then to use this gradient, we have to take its output and feed it into sample gradient node. And now this time input will determine which part of the color to take from this gradient. So if I pass in 0, I will get the color from the very left. And if I pass in 1, I will get the color from the very right. And now I want to apply this gradient vertically. So for that, I'm simply going to use UV node. And here the UV node will have three components, X, Y, and Z, which will go from minus 1 to 1. Let me just show you. So our UVs will look something like this. Again, nothing new here. All of this is covered in previous episode. Then we'll use the Y component from this UV using swizzle node. In the mask, type in Y. Now here the preview is not very useful. So let me just collapse it. But we have to remember that the Y here will go from minus 1 to 1. Then I'm going to remap it to go from 0 to 1 using remap node. So we will say that the original range was minus 1 to 1 and I want it to go from 0 to 1. So that's all perfect. Let's take its output and feed it into this time. Finally, take sample gradient node's output and feed it into the base color. Let's see. And we have a nice skybox. All right, now let's make some clouds. And for that, I'm going to create new subgraph. So let me take this project window right here so that I won't be in a way. And let's create new subgraph. I'm going to call it clouds. And let's open it. In the subgraph, let's select our output node and open up the graph inspector. Currently, it is outputting vector 4. We only need float, so let's change it to float and let's rename it to give some meaningful name, so clouds. And now our subgraph will have three properties, so open up the properties window and let me create new vector2 property. And by the way, this will act as an input for our subgraph, so we will receive UVs as an input. Then burn more input for scale. So new float property with scale. And we also want to pan the cloud. So let's create one more vector 2 property. Let's call it speed. Drag all three of them. And now to create some clouds, I'm going to use simple noise node. And therefore the scale, let's use our input scale. And just to see the preview, let's default our scale with the value of 50. And now we will have noise that will look something like this. 
and we also want to pan it and for that let's create tiling and offset node take its output and feed it into this uv slot and now to pan this we can change this offset pretty cool so we will simply use our speed and feed it as offset all right now we have our noise now i'm going to duplicate all these nodes then for this noise basically i want the scale to be half of the original value so before i feed the scale here i'm going to multiply it with 0.5 and then use it as scale and same thing with the speed but i want the speed to be 10 percent higher than the original so I'm going to multiply it with 1.1 and then use it as offset. All right, we have two different noise. Let's multiply them together. Then we will have something like this. Now again, I'm going to duplicate all these nodes and for this one, I want the noise scale to be the quarter of the original. So instead of 0 0.05, let's go 0 0.25. And for the speed, let's go 1.2. Then again, multiply it with our multiply node. Okay, so we will have something like this. And we will use this as our cloud noise. So let's take its output and feed it into the output node. And now all three of our tiling and offset node uses the default UVs. Instead of that, we want to use the input UVs. So let's take its output and feed it into all three of them. It will break the preview, but it will work just fine when we input the UVs properly. All right, that's it for our subgraph. Let's save it. And go back to our skybox shader graph. Now here I can search for my subgraph. So clouds. And for the UVs, let's try to use the default UVs for now. So it will look something like this. And for now, let's just visualize it. Okay, so we have our clouds. But if I move to the side, we will have some stretching going on. That's because we are using the XY component of our UVs. So basically we are trying to apply the texture parallel to the XY plane. So basically from the sides. We don't really want to do that. We want to apply the texture from the top. So instead of using default XY, let's use XZ using another swizzle node. In the mask, type in XZ. And then use its output as UVs. It will break the preview here, but if I hit save, yep, now our texture is applied from the top. All right, now for the scale, I want to control it from the inspector. So let's create a new property, scale or cloud scale. Let's default it to 100, drag it in and feed it into the scale then for the speed let's create new vector 2 property let's call it pan speed and let's default it to 0 0.001 that will be too slow so 0 0.01 0 0.01 then drag it in then take our speed and multiply it with the time input then use it as our speed so now you can see that our noise is panning slowly but now if i look at it closely you can see that the noise is applied in a like dome like shape or spherical shape and i don't really like that basically i want to apply the noise flat to the exit plane and we can simply do that by dividing our exit component with our y component of the uv so i'm going to duplicate this whistle node let's take y channel 
and divide it with our XZ. Then use this divide node as our UVs. Don't worry about the preview. And if I save, yep, now our noise is flat basically. And now we have another issue that our clouds are also present in the ground part. We don't really want that. So to fix that, I'm going to use this Y component again and feed it into the smooth step node. And now I'm going to say that I want value of zero if this input is less than zero. And I want white value or value of one if this input is greater than, let's say, 0.2. And the input value that falls between these two edges will be interpolated. All right, then let's simply multiply it with our clouds. And let's visualize it. So yep, now our noise only exists in the sky part. Pretty cool. But now I want to control this blend from the inspector as well. So for that, let's create new float property. Let's call it blend height. Let's set the default value to zero and set the mode to slider that goes from minus one to one and drag it in. Then instead of directly using my Y component, I'm going to subtract it from the blend height and then use it instead. So now I can control the height from the slider. Pretty cool. All right, now we have our clouds, but they're not looking very good. So let's try to fix that. So I'm going to duplicate my cloud subgraph. Then for this one, I want the scale to be 10% of the original scale. So I'm going to multiply it with 0.1. By the way, you can experiment with these numbers. Then let's use it as scale. And we will do the same thing with the speed. So so let's multiply our speed with, let's say, 1.2, 1.2, and use it as speed. Then I'm going to take its output and feed it into another smooth step node. And here I'm going to say that I want black values if this input is less than zero and white values if the input is greater than, let's say, 0.2. And let's just visualize it instead. So now we will have something like this. And now here I want to control this edge from the inspector. So let's create new property. Let's call it, I don't know, cloud density. Let's set the default value to 0.2 and set the mode to slider that goes from 0 to 1. Drag it in and use it as edge 2. Then we will add this on top of our previous cloud. So simply add. Then take this add nodes output and feed it into this multiply so that we won't have this clouds in the bottom. And let's visualize it. And by adding this smooth step onto our previous cloud, we basically added a new layer of clouds. So here, if I increase the cloud density, well, our second layer is fading away. And if I decrease the cloud density, yeah, it becomes more prominent. So our slider doesn't make any sense. Basically, I want to decrease the density if we decrease the value. So I can fix that by inverting this cloud density. And we can do that by simply using one minus node. One minus as the name suggests will go one minus our input. And in this case, because our cloud density only goes from zero to one, it will invert the values. Then use this output instead. So now if I decrease the density, the second layer is completely faded. And if I increase the density, Yep, 
now our cloud density slider makes a lot of sense. Alright, now our clouds are slightly more interesting, but they fill the entire sky. I don't really want that, so let's create a mask for our clouds. And for that, I'm again going to duplicate my subgraph. For this one, again for the scale, I want the 10% of this scale, or basically 1% of the original scale. So let's again multiply it with 0.1. Again, you can play around with these values. And for the speed, I want it to be almost half of the original. So let's simply multiply it. Let's, let's say 0.4. And use it here. Then I'm going to take this output and feed it into new smooth step. And here I will go that if the input is let's say greater than 0.2 i want black values and if the input is less than zero i want white values and if you're confused i do have an entire video about smooth step you should definitely check that out all right let's visualize this okay so we have something like this and we will use this as our cloud mask but first i want to control this edge value from the inspector so again Let's create a float property and this time I'm going to call it cloud scatter. Again, let's set the default value to 0.1 and set the mode to slider that goes from 0 to 1. Drag it in and feed it into this edge value. Then let's take the smooth step value and multiply it with our cloud so this add output so by multiplying them together we will only see the clouds in this white parts all right now let's take this output and feed it into this multiply and let's just visualize that so now our clouds will have some gaps in the sky as well so that's pretty cool and now i want to control the clouds intensity as well so for that let's create one more property let's go float cloud intensity and let's set the default value to one drag it in and let's multiply it with our final multiply then let's take our cloud and add the skybox color on top so let's take the sample gradient output and feed it into the add node add our clouds on top and then use this output as base color okay now let's try to adjust our values so let's try to increase scale a bit for the density have something like this for the blend let's go something like this and for the scatter yep something like this but now you can see that we have same issue with the scatter slider that we had with this density slider basically what i want is if i increase the scatter value all the way to the right i want the clouds to be scattered across the sky but right now we are having them a lot cluttered so this slider is having the opposite effect so to fix that we will simply invert this cloud scatter as well just like we did with the density so let's feed it into one minus node and then use this output instead so now if i decrease the scatter value yep i have the cluttered clouds and if i increase the scatter value yep they are spread more in the sky so this slider makes a lot more sense now and there we have some nice looking clouds i hope you find the video helpful click that like button so that the algorithm will push it to more people and if you're new here hit that subscribe button and for the project files you can check out my patreon that's it from me and i'll see you in the next one